Chica Biet, comrades. I'm the heretic. Postal Cat, or as he was previously known as Mike the Cat, is an anarcho-capitalist YouTuber attempting to debunk several Marxist ideas in one video. Now, I know Mike the Cat, or Postal Cat. He's not unintelligent, and I know he isn't evil. Therefore, enlightening him to the virtues of communism through reason and argumentation is the best way to go if I want to enlighten him to the virtues of communism. Hit it! Rules for Radicals number 11. If you push a negative long enough, it becomes a positive. In other words, you must be on the offensive in a political debate. Otherwise, you are losing. Number 11 was referring to how if your side comes under physical attack, you win, because everybody loves rooting for the underdog. What you're thinking of is number 8, keep the pressure on and never let up. Yeah, it's a nitpick, but please continue. Cultural Marxism is nothing more nor less than the application of class theory to every aspect of human existence. This practice has many forms, many names, though you may know it as critical theory. What makes critical theory useful is how it takes conflict that has existed throughout history and contextualizes it as a repeating pattern throughout history, while questioning the need for the conflict itself. After all, there are only two sides that really matter. These conflicts usually manifest as sexism and racism today. It's very easy to take what capitalism has built for granted without recognizing the problems inherent in the system, both in terms of class struggle and the way in which it pits those within these classes against each other for the dumbest of reasons. Doesn't anyone find it weird that a white man and a black woman should have to compete to be exploited through wage labor by our bourgeois employer? Basically, the whole point is to oversimplify complex issues to a matter of class warfare, rich against the poor, black against white, patriarchy versus the fairer sex. You get the idea. In order to be an effective left-wing radical, you have to also be a malcontent. Just saying that it's oversimplified isn't an argument, right? I mean, are we wrong? Also note that the race and sex conflict stems from class conflict. It just so happens that the bourgeois are white patriarchs. Not by accident in our rich capitalist zeitgeist, I'm sure. This anger is effective because anger clouds a person's judgment and makes them susceptible to any demagogue that happens to tell them what they want to hear. Anything that absolves them of responsibility for their own well-being. It's not about clouding judgment, though. It's about identifying a problem and getting people motivated enough to do something about it. In this case, that capitalism has completely screwed everyone, save for an elite minority of bourgeois capitalists and their thuggish enforcers in capitalist governments. It's also not about avoiding responsibility either. We have to start a revolution so that our hatchlings and our hatchlings' hatchlings don't have to. How is that not a responsibility? When you are faced with a critic, you need to ask yourself only one question. What is their alternative? Because whenever a person criticizes something, it is always with the assumption that they know what would be a better alternative. A classless, stateless, and moneyless society organized such that everybody owned the means of production. That's all that communism is. One where you work out of genuine love for your fellow man or that as a means to attain more material wealth. To have belonging in a greater global consensus. The only people who would be against this either don't know any better, or directly profit from the current system. The capitalist propaganda machine is quite formidable. Karl Marx is famous for saying that religion is the opiate of the masses. At best, what that means is that religion is another way that the working class numbs the pain of existence, much like how mass media is used today. At worst, it means that religion is yet another bourgeoisie conspiracy, to keep the working class down. Is religion a bourgeois conspiracy? Of course it isn't. It's a remnant of past historical stages. Religion is useful for rallying society in primitive times when people didn't know any better. It served its purpose, and we can phase out the belief in magical sky fairies. Sadly, it's not as easy as it sounds, as a sense of belonging and purpose one should be getting from communism and class consciousness is instead being filled by superstition. So yes, they are competing ideas, but let's be honest about why they're competing. So in other words, 
the reasons why communists typically hate religion is because it provides an alternative to communism. No devout religionist would ever consider communism for even a moment, because most religions, especially Christianity, already teach people to take care of one another. It's great that Christianity has advocated that, but do I need to bring out the book of Deuteronomy? Some pretty messed up stuff has been done in the name of Christianity as well, and their institutions have been a source of class conflict throughout history. What does communism teach on the other hand? Covet thy neighbor's property. Destroy the nuclear family. Killing is, it, is acceptable if it's to obtain what you desire. Demagogue to the poor and downtrodden, and use them as an excuse to commit terrible atrocities. You're criticizing us for demagoguing, and then you describe us like that? Where to start? What does communism teach on the other hand? Covet thy neighbor's property. Property is theft, you understand. Your having it is preventing someone else from having it, even if their need exceeds yours. Who are you to say that you need your property more than I might? Destroy the nuclear family. The family is the oldest form of social relationship and the source of private property and division of labor. Division of labor is implicit in the act of sex. Other divisions were formed on the base of sex and age. And because women and children are, in essence, slaves of the father, we see the first examples of property. So do I want to abolish the nuclear family? Absolutely. Why don't you? Killing is, it, is acceptable if it's to obtain what you desire. That's not only a gross misunderstanding of communism, but one that's insanely hypocritical. What is imperialism except capitalist countries killing to get what they want? Demagogue to the poor and downtrodden. I'm sure the sophists thought Socrates was a demagogue too. And since you like Christianity so much, what did the Sadducees think of Jesus? And use them as an excuse to commit terrible atrocities. You're going to have to be a bit more specific. Fan the flames of existing conflicts between different groups of people, and glory in the resulting bloodshed. Hold on a second. We're communists, not blood god cultists. So the communist alternative to a religion that preaches against materialism and idolatry a religion that teaches to love your neighbor and care for the poor and downtrodden, is a godless pseudo-religion that glorifies materialism, covetousness, greed, intolerance, and bloodlust. You would say that as you don't understand communism, our alternative to primitive superstition is a philosophy of class consciousness, equality, participation, community, generosity, and fairness. Come on, man, this isn't hard. If you're really hung up on the bloody revolutions in the past, I can address those. Those weren't true revolutions. I know, I know, but not real communism, but hear me out. They were Marxist-Leninist revolutions set up by individuals who sought to use the revolution for their own ends. A communist revolution requires class consciousness, and when the revolution is tied to Lenin's professional revolutionaries, it ceases to be a class consciousness and becomes a cult of personality, which is bad. Why is it that whenever socialism fails, it's always because they supposedly didn't take it far enough? The purpose of socialism is communism. Those that are satisfied with a halfway point shouldn't be surprised when they lose. Why do socialist countries like China and Vietnam turn towards mercantilist systems or otherwise heavily regulated market economies after attempting communism. Marxism-Leninism sucks. That's why. The communist revolution has to be about class consciousness, not leader consciousness, idiots. For all its faults, capitalism does produce. Thus, if you can't get to communism, taking a step back is the perfectly rational thing to do. The leftist mode of criticism is not only hypocritical, it's also dishonest. Not only do they criticize things for which they have no good alternative for, but they also evade responsibility for their own failures or shortcomings, because to them, their ideology is the only one above criticism. No ideas are above criticism. Take anarcho-capitalism, for example. Property requires force, as to acquire it in the first place means you have to seize it from collective ownership. I'm reasonably sure there wasn't a consensus to exclude everybody from what you're taking, so it must have been taken violently. 
violence is only done legitimately through the state, and thus the state is the means of enforcing property rights. Although capitalism will inevitably collapse and transition into socialism through revolution, you can have capitalism, you can have anarchism, but you can't have both. For instance, when feminists like Zhou Quinn or Brianna Wu fail to create good games, they evade responsibility for their own failures by whining about how sexist and misogynistic most gamers are. And that's supposedly why they cannot garner positive user feedback on Steam. Yeah, that's completely accurate. Please continue. They demagogue to the working class, they fan the flames of class warfare, get them to fight and die for the revolution, all for the purpose of creating a power vacuum that would in inevitably be filled by a communist dictator. You do realize a communist dictator is an oxymoron, right? Communists want a classless, stateless, and moneyless system. This is your best defense against the dishonest use of critical theory. If the critic you are dealing with cannot offer you anything better than what it is they are criticizing, you can either ignore them or you can return the favor and criticize their ideology. Call them out on their hypocrisy. I've already provided my alternative. Don't make me say it again, Postal Cat. I just did. The rest of the video is just monologuing about how leftist radicals are dishonest. I don't think I'm dishonest. I'm in fact been very fair to you. Here's the thing. We've been trying capitalism. We've tried it over a long time. And regardless of your opinion, you have to admit it's not working. Okay, but so what? More specifically, the problem is that capitalism fails to recognize objective value, which creates distortions in the economy. Workers aren't paid the value of what they produce, which means they're not able to buy the things they're producing. They're making things that they can't buy. You don't need to know math to know that this isn't sustainable. And tweaking some things like tax rates or thinking you can somehow enforce property without a state isn't going to change that. What happens when it falls, however, is still up for grabs. We both want as smooth a transition as possible, but clinging onto outdated ideas of property rights or subjective value is what causes these conflicts to begin with. Postal Cat, I know you mean well, but your ideas are just going to get more people killed. With the right information, you'll come around. I'm sure of it. Questions? Comments? Critique? Do you think the communist revolution is inevitable? Will I ever come back to my senses? Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.